This is the 36th video in our series looking at how to complete a basic setup and configuration of a Synology Network Attached Storage Device, or as they're more commonly referred to, a NAS. In our previous video, we installed onto our Synology NAS a VPN server which we configured to use L2TP IPsec. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how we can configure the VPN client built into macOS to allow us to connect to our VPN server. In order to configure the VPN client in macOS, if from our desktop we locate and then select System Preferences, from within System Preferences, we will first need to select the option called Network. When we open the Network panel, we are presented with a list of the different connections that our Mac has been configured to make. As we will need to add a VPN client to this list, we first need to unlock this panel in order to make changes to the configuration of our computer. Once we've entered our administrator's credentials, by selecting Unlock, we will gain access to the network settings on our Mac. If we now select the Add Symbol, we can create a new service. In order for us to create a new service, we're first asked to select an interface from the drop-down menu. Let's select VPN. As we configured the VPN server on our Synology NAS to only use the L2TP IPsec protocol, in VPN type, we now need to choose L2TP over IPsec. Next in the service name field, we need to give our VPN connection a meaningful name. The name that you decide to use will be particularly important if you intend to use multiple VPN connections. Let's now select Create. As you can see, the status of our VPN client currently states that it's not configured. So let's configure our VPN client. The first setting that we need to adjust is server address. This can be either the static IP address of your home broadband connection or your domain name. If like us, you do not own a static public IP address, but have configured your Synology NAS to use DDNS, you will only be able to use the domain name that was assigned to you by your DDNS service. We now need to enter an account name. If you remember back to our previous video, we set privileges on our VPN server to only allow specific users of our NAS to be able to access the VPN server. So in account name, we now need to enter the username to one of the users who has been given access privileges to the VPN server on our NAS. Next, we need to select authentication settings. As you can see, our VPN connection will require two types of authentication. The first form of authentication is user authentication and is simply a request for a user password. However, as we want the users of our VPN connection to always be prompted for a password before they can access our home network, we will leave this setting blank. Next, we have machine authentication, which is the second form of authentication that our VPN connection will need in order to connect to our VPN server. If you remember back to our previous video, we had to create a pre-share key. That pre-share key is a password that only our VPN clients and our VPN server will know. Let's enter our pre-share key into the shared secret field. Having now added authentication settings to our VPN client, we can select OK. Next, we need to select Advanced. Within Advanced, we have four tabs, Options, TCP IP, DNS, and Proxies. While we are only interested in changing one setting under Options, let's review the options being presented. The options, Disconnect when switching user accounts, and Disconnect when users log out, are both fairly self-explanatory. So because they have both been enabled by default, we will be leaving these options enabled. The option Send All Traffic Over VPN Connection will be an option that you might want to enable or leave disabled depending on your requirements and how your Synology NAS has been configured. If we leave the VPN client set, 
so that not all data traffic will be sent through our VPN connection, certain data types such as internet traffic can be more quickly sent and received. This is because our VPN client will not relay that traffic through our VPN server. While this has the benefit that browsing the internet will be faster, by leaving the option send all traffic over VPN connection disabled, we could allow a third party to more easily determine the true location of our computer. However, if you do intend to enable this setting, be warned that we found an issue where our VPN server had problems telling our VPN client which DNS server it should be using. This in turn created an issue where when using our VPN client, our computer was able to connect to our home network, but it was not always able to access the internet. The solution to this problem seems to be to install and then configure DNS server onto our Synology NAS. So we will be looking at installing and configuring DNS server in a future video. For now, if you have not already installed or do not intend to install a DNS server onto your Synology NAS, you should simply leave this setting disabled. However, as we want to better demonstrate that our VPN server is functioning correctly, we have already installed and configured DNS server onto our NAS. So for the purposes of this video, we are going to enable this setting. Under advanced options, we have a single setting called user verbose logging. Verbose logging is usually used for troubleshooting as it will force our VPN client to log more information about our VPN connection. However, as we do not expect to have any issues with our VPN client, for now we will leave this setting disabled. The other settings in the advanced panel, we will be leaving on their default settings. However, for your reference, these are the settings for the TCP IP, DNS, and proxy settings in our VPN client. Let's select OK and return to our network panel. The final option that we're going to enable is the option called Show VPN Status in Menu Bar. If we enable this setting, an icon will be added to the menu bar of macOS. This icon is very useful as it will make it easier for us to initiate a VPN connection. By selecting Apply, we're now ready to test that our new VPN connection is working correctly. In order to test our VPN connection, we first need to connect our Mac to an internet connection that is independent of our home network. The easiest way to do this is to tether our Mac to our mobile phone so that our Mac uses the internet connection on our phone. With our Mac now connected to the internet, we should check that we can browse a web page. If we open our web browser and then run a Google search for the term what is my IP address? The search results should display the public IP address that our mobile phone is currently using to connect to the internet. So with our Mac now connected to the internet, let's try and establish a VPN connection. By selecting the VPN icon in the menu bar, we are presented with a list of options. At the top of this list, we have an option that will allow us to establish a VPN connection between our computer and the VPN server on our NAS. However, before we select this option, we are going to enable the option Show Time Connected. This is a setting that works in conjunction with the option Show Status While Connecting. Both of these options are useful in that they will give us additional information about the status of our VPN connection. Let's now try and connect to our VPN server. The VPN client will first try and connect to our NAS using the pre-share key. If that connection is successful, we will then be prompted to enter a username and password for a user who is allowed to access our NAS via VPN. Let's enter a valid username and password and select OK. In the menu bar, the VPN icon will display the status of our VPN connection and then once connected, display how long we've been connected for. Let's now test our VPN connection. First, we're going to check that we can still connect to the internet. If we once again load our web browser and refresh the Google search for our public IP address, we can confirm that we're still able to access the internet. 
You may have noticed that our public IP address has changed. This is because we take the option to send all traffic over our VPN connection. So the public IP address that you can see here is the address being used by our NAS and not the public IP address being used by our mobile phone. However, if you did not tick the option to send all of your traffic over your VPN connection, you will find that your public IP address will not have changed. This is because your internet traffic is still being passed directly from your mobile phone to the internet. Let's now test that we can access the network shares on our NAS. If from the menu bar of Finder, we select Go, and then from the menu choose the option Connect to Server, when the Connect to Server panel appears, if we type SMB colon forward slash forward slash and then the local IP address of our Synology NAS, when we select Connect, we will be presented with a panel asking us to sign in with an authorized user's credentials. After entering a valid username and password, when we select Connect, we are prompted to choose a network share to mount. When we select a network share and then choose OK, that network share should mount. As we have now confirmed that our VPN connection is working correctly, let's dismount from our network share and then take a look at how we disconnect from our VPN server. To disconnect from our VPN server, we simply need to select the VPN client icon from the menu bar. Now from the drop down menu, if we select disconnect, after a brief delay, we are disconnected from our VPN server. So to summarize, in this video we took a look at how you can configure the VPN client built into macOS so that it will work with the VPN server we've installed onto our Synology NAS. We then tested our VPN connection by accessing the internet and a network share on our NAS before finally dismounting from our network share and disconnecting from our VPN connection. In the next video in this series, as we've just discovered that VPN server will work better with a DNS server installed on our Synology NAS, we'll be taking a look at installing and then configuring DNS server.